the primary question, one of the probably more important concepts to understand, uh, it comes uh, right from the model of the world. So one of the very first things that you'll see um, coming into the Inevitable You coaching system, uh, this question is designed, uh, well, rather the, the model of the world question is designed to uh, extract your primary question. And it's really the question that you ask most frequently. Uh, and I'll give you some examples of, of what that means and what it looks like. <clears throat> but I wanted to start off with this quote because it's a great one. It comes from Tony Robbins. Uh, the quality of your life is a direct reflection of the quality of of the questions you are asking yourself. So uh, again, very brilliant, succinct uh, quote here from, from Mr. Robbins. I completely agree. Uh, the quality of the questions are gonna drive the quality of the answers that you're gonna arrive at, leading to the uh, quality of the results that you're gonna produce. So. Uh, a couple of things to start off and, and catch up on, refresh uh, with, within the Inevitable You system. We're constantly talking about software, right? Mental software, this operating system. And really, it's just a series of instructions of what to do with the data. The data being your history, you know, your past, the things that happened. It could be, you know, current things, you know, present uh, things that you're experiencing in the present moment. You're always making sense of what's going on or what has happened. Um, even, you know, you could take this into the future now, um, even though the future isn't data yet, but, uh, you know, we, we like to time travel. We'll think about things that could happen, things that, you know, we'll... We'll go into our predictions of what will happen. We all love some sense of predictability uh, as to what, what's going to happen in our lives. And so that's really all software is, is just a series of instructions and, you know, designed or installed by family of origin programming. Uh, so these instructions were handed to you, programmed by the people you spent the most time with early on in life. And really, what these instructions are doing, uh, this is the, the common brain or mind cycle. This is what's always happening. You know, data presents itself and we're first asking, what does this mean? You know, and so we have tools that go in depth on how we do this and how we can, you know, create our own meanings. The I choose meaning tool, for instance. Old software is going to create meanings based on its instructions. New software will derive, you know, create totally different meanings when you start to reframe those data points and you look at, you know, the half full and the half empty aspects and you get to choose uh, what it means. And based on that meaning, you assign a feeling. You know, is this, does this make me sad? Does this make me happy? Does this make me angry? We're making sense of the data. We feel an emotion and this all leads to now our actions or inactions, right? I will, I won't, I can, I can't, you know, up to this point, but not past this point. So everything that's happening, all the results that you are creating or not creating, the quality of your life is based on this cycle. And so when we're looking at questions as a really big component of this, again, we, we behave very much like a computer. We've, we've talked about this a lot. And uh, like a computer program, we're constantly asking ourselves a first question or a primary question. 
and a series of questions to follow in a logical order that allows us to process life, our experiences, our data points, our history, you know, creating our predictability, what, what's going to happen or not happen for us in the future. And, and it's dictating the actions that are occurring. So again, you know, some examples of what this looks like, these series of questions. What do I do with the data, with this moment? What do I focus on now? What do I think now? And what meaning am I assigning to this moment? That's basically a, a summary of what these questions can look like and how they appear and you know where they come from our family of origin software. Now, uh, I want to go into some examples of, of what this looks like. So again, the, the primary question or the first question, um, it, it's, it's going to it's going to create something for you. It's going to appear very frequently, you know, almost all the time. You know, so when you think about this, uh, and let me let me go to this first, actually. This is lifted from the model of the world. So when you read through this, you know, what do I do with this data, with this moment? There it is again. Um, you will notice that you ask this question or constellation of questions across many contexts. And for most, you know, it's not really resourceful as or as empowering as we need it to be. Meaning that it's going to create some, it, it could create some disempowering, you know, thoughts, habitual sentences energy for us but but this question this first question it's it's one that you're asking yourselves most frequently there you you're constantly you know in many settings it's it's appearing so that's the first question uh for you <laughs> to arrive at your first question is what question do i ask most constantly now some examples could be uh, and these are actually pulled from uh, real MOWs. Uh, but what makes you think that you can have or be or do that? Right? Who do you think you are? What, why does this always happen to me? And why do why do I keep creating the same thing over and over again? How, you know, what's the matter with me? And because our brains are very efficient, a very powerful you know, machine that we were using. What do you think happens when you ask it a question? What is it going to give you? When you ask yourself a question, what what's your brain, your mind naturally going to give you? An answer. Yes, an answer. It'll give you the answers to the question that you're asking. So when you're asking something like what's wrong with me or what's the matter with me or why do I why does this always happen to me? You you're going to arrive at answers as to why this always happens to me. Now and if, if your old software, your family of origin, you know, it is like most in and away pattern looking at what's wrong and trying to avoid pain and and you know, failure, and it, it's gonna look, it's gonna find. Well, he, well, here's what's wrong. Well, yeah, this is how you screw it up, and 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 that's wrong, and and oh yeah, and that that's wrong, and so you can't really create in, in that kind of pattern anything really empowering. Now, it, it's not to say that these are wrong or stupid or bad or none of that. Because there is some benefit to asking these kinds of questions. Again, away patterns aren't bad. They're very effective for, you know, avoiding the things that you don't want. But as we've looked at before in the don't spill the milk pattern or the, you know, law of attraction, 
it's just an attraction for more of those things. Your focus is on not spilling. It's not on how do I pour carefully. So as long as you are still in this kind of focus, it keeps you locked into that pattern. It keeps you, you know, repeating those same things over and over again. And, you know, with away patterns, just like with our don't st stick the knife in the socket, once you know what not to do, now what's my pour carefully? What, what, do I, what do we do with knives instead? You know, so this allows you, it gives you consciousness about what that first primary question is and then arrive at something that, you know, m shifts your focus, that puts you in a towards pattern that can create more empowering outcomes and results for you that's going to fuel different actions. So uh, let's take some examples here. Like, um, you know, what's the matter with me, for instance? This person in their new first question design, what are all the facts I have now to make the decision? You know, uh, what am I going to do to dig myself out of this mess versus what other information do I need? So you can feel the shifts in energy. You can feel the shifts from the, you know, half empty to the half full. And let, let me go back here to the MOW because, again, this exercise is not only in the model of the world. It's also on the member site. It's all there's a specific worksheet that helps you work through changing these questions, this primary question for you. Because when you look at the question, when you identify what it is, the next step, and where did it come from? Whose program is it really? Was it mom's? Was it dad's? You know, was it something that you created because you you know, intensely fought old programming? You know, where, where did it come from? What specific circumstances brought it into your life? It could be a, a data point or several data points that intensified it over time or, de you know, developed it not just from when you were, you know, five years old when the software was installed, but it, it was evolved over time. Then, what do you create when you ask this question? So again, what energy do you generate? What are you attracting? You know, is if it's a don't spill, or if you're constantly focused on, you know, what's wrong with me, for instance, that's all the answers you're gonna get. That's all the focus is gonna be versus, what are my strengths that I can build on? What's right right now? What's going well right now that I, you know, can use and build upon? So, um, the next step, once you look at, you know, what you're really creating, because for most, you probably think that the question that's running in your old software is a, is a good question. It's, well, don't spill prevents me from spilling milk, right? Well, no, it actually enhances the probability because you're, you're focused on it versus pouring carefully. So you'll see the next question, what's the positive intention? Well, you know, again, it's going to be some form of avoid pain. You know, and the more, the more I worry about, the more that I, you know, try to fix my weaknesses and for most, again, the 90%, it's going to be some form of pain avoidance benefit that you think you're getting. <clears throat> and then finally, the fifth part here, designing the new powerful question. And here it is. Here's the example that I've been referring to. You know, instead of what's wrong with me, you could shift it to what's right. How will I use that now? You know, instead of why do I always seem to get screwed, how can I, how will I achieve my success now? What do I have to focus on? Versus 
what went wrong and why does this keep happening to me? <clears throat> so um, back to some examples. And again, you can find this for inspiration on the website. It's, it's uh, under, I think it's, we've used mul uh, two variations of it over the years. Um, that's why I've been talking about it as primary and first. Um, it is actually called the first question on the website. You may see it in other uh, settings as the primary question. So uh, these examples are on the website. There's a whole another audio, 12 minutes long, uh, the worksheet as well. So if you really want to do some deep work on this, um, highly recommend doing that exercise.